everyone. My name is Andrea Kloss with Henry Schein, and I'm pleased to present Kimberly Bodiford, who will be walking us through the new generation of scalers and curettes this evening. Kimberly is the clinical coordinator for the dental hygiene program at Trident Technical College in Charleston, South Carolina. She worked for Health Promotion Specialist, a public oral health program for 13 years before becoming a full-time clinical and didactic instructor. She has experience teaching a wide variety of courses, including public health, dental health education, clinical procedures, advanced instrumentation, and radiology. Kimberly has been a proud member of the ADH ADHA since graduating from dental hygiene school in 2001. Should you have any questions during the webinar, please type them into the chat box and send them to the organizers and panelists, and we'll get, we will get to them at the end. Thank you. Good evening. How is everyone? Hope you're doing well. Um, welcome to the new generation of scalers and curettes, what you need to know. Today, we are going to learn about the importance of working with instruments that have been created ergonomically with your health in mind, as well as the importance of using and maintaining sharp instruments. Here we go. Um, like she said, my name is Kim Bodiford. I am from Charleston, South Carolina. I am a Southern girl, so expect to hear some y'alls this evening. Hopefully you'll find it enduring. I've been a hygienist for 19 years and I'm currently the clinical coordinator at Trident Technical College um, Dental Services. Um, the objectives for the webinar are listed here. Um, today we are going to learn, so let's go ahead and get started. So, if anyone of you has ever visited the Museum of Dentistry in Baltimore, you may have seen these instruments. These were some of the first dental instruments from the 19th century. You'll notice they were single-ended and had some very large handles. Um, aren't you happy you, didn't, you don't have to use these? Let's look at the multi-dimensional multi nature of ergonomics. Ergonomics focus on a wide spectrum of workplace situations ranging from physical aspects of the environment to psychological threats to health. Manufacturing and design of dental operatories and equipment are obvious factors in the ergonomics of the workplace. Looking at the progression of ergonomic design, years ago, instrument handles were either octagonal, a tiny cross-hatched texture on the handle surface, or they were round and smooth. Companies are now focusing, focusing on creating new types of texture patterns on the handles. While the majority of instrument handles are still long, round tube, a few companies have created handles that have surfaces that are slightly curved at strategic points, or the overall surface is heavily dimpled, creating a more comfortably natural finger rest. Regardless of the design, a textured surface improves traction, especially in wet conditions, which is prevalent in most dental procedures. Along with larger diameter handles and textured surfaces, most instrument handles are no longer solid metal. Ergonomists know that excess weight can create unnecessary stress and fatigue. The choices now range from hollow metal, resin metal combinations, silicone metal designs, to all resin models. Both hollow metal and metal resin designs reduce the overall instrument weight. Studies have explored the optimal diameter of the instrument handle and have concluded that 10 millimeter diameter produces the greatest benefit. Larger than this did not seem to produce any additional benefit. The weight of the instrument also has an effect of the load, with the lightweight instrument requiring less of a pinch force. Any device that we use in our hands clinically has the potential to create stress on our bodies. Two major factors contribute to injuries related to instruments. The first factor is the design of the actual instrument, and the other one is how we actually use the device. To help reduce the ergonomic stress that hand instruments put on our body, 
instrument manufacturers develop handles that decrease these stresses. Larger diameter instruments limit pitch grip, which results in a more relaxed hand posture. Here's a study that I found to be interesting. It's from June 27, Journal of Dental Hygiene, and it compared four instrument handle designs. It concluded the instrument handle design has an effect on forearm muscle activity when scaling in a simulated environment and basically showed that the participants in the study were more affected by handle diameter than they were the weight. I thought that was interesting. Today's trend in dental hygiene care includes ultrasonic scalers. They are becoming mainstream and considered by many to be the standard of care in dental hygiene, supplemented by hand instrumentation as the need arises. Many hygienists have embraced the advances, advances in ultrasonic technologies and released their fear of relying on hand scaling as the gold standard. They are enjoying the ergonomic benefits of power scaling while still delivering quality care. However, we all know that hand instrumentation does have its place in every appointment as tactile sensitivity is the main indicator in calculus detection. When looking at the most important factors of an instrument, we talked about the handle diameters and the weight. Balance is another important feature to look for, and we will look at that in a minute. Ultrasonics, an important aspect of this discussion is the current utilization of ultrasonic versus hand instrumentation in the workplace. Some surveys suggest it is utilized for more than 70% of the scaling and debridement procedures. And last, any instrument with a cutting edge should be kept sharp during the entire procedure. Dull instruments can cause the clinician to apply additional force, resulting in increased lateral pressure applied, excess stroke repetitions, and a tightened grasp. So when we look at the instrument, we wanna make sure we have a balance of tips. Working ends are aligned with the long axis of the handle. Balancing allows the finger pressure to be transferred more effectively to the working end, reducing muscle stress on the hands and the arms. When the instrument is not balanced, the lateral pressure when activated causes the instrument to turn slightly in the clinician's fingers. So when you look at the shank, it should be parallel to the working end. This indicates a balanced instrument. So less ergonomic stress with better precision means better control. Also, less tissue trauma. Let's look at the advantages of the ultrasonic. So we know that it provides irrigation, which is a great benefit. No sharpening, no cutting edges, takes less time, increased patient comfort, and decreased operator and patient fatigue, which is wonderful. Like I said earlier, Many hygienists have embraced the advances, the advances in ultrasonic technique and have released their fear of relying on hand scaling as the gold standard. They are enjoying the ergonomic benefits of power scaling while delivering quality care. While hand instruments have been a mainstay for many clinicians, especially those who were trained 20, 30 years ago, ultrasonic dental scalers are now appreciated in ways they were never expected. While there are many advantages to, to the use of ultrasonics, there are a few disadvantages as well. So, aerosol production, the need for evacuation, patient sensitivity, there are some patients that take the ultrasonic, the noise, the vibration, the expense, and there are some heat production. So the main disadvantage I wanna talk about here is the lack of tactile sensitivity. We just don't have the same tactile sensitivity that we do with our hand instruments. The ultrasonic is great. It's great, we all like it. It aids in removing biofilm, calculus, and also much faster than hand scaling. But we still use our hand instruments. 
whether there's some tenacious piece of calculus on the distal of that second molar that we need to grab our area specific trace before, or there's crowding in section five and we're on the lingual, so we want to grab that system scalar to get those tight contacts. We almost always have to go back and find scale in some areas with our hand instruments. They command a prominent role in our periodontal therapy. With that being said, there will always be a role for hand instrument hygiene. That means as a hygienist, we must do our part. Dull instruments are the worst. They, the impact they create can be so damaging. Not only do we burnish calculus, leaving our patients at risk, but we spend double time trying to remove it, creating more discomfort to the patient, which in turn creates a longer appointment overall. So using dull instruments all day long is going to impact you significantly. You are putting yourself at risk for muscular skeletal disorders such as carpal tunnel syndrome. Carpal tunnel syndrome is a common condition that causes pain, numbness, tingling in the hands and arms. The condition occurs when one of the major nerves in the hand, the median nerve, is squeezed or compressed as it travels through the wrist. When this very important nerve is compressed, it can spell trouble for dental professionals. Dental hygiene requires physical demands that cause, can cause musculoskeletal problems such as carpal tunnel syndrome. So due to this repetitive work, Correct posture, wrist position, and not or and or non-ideal instruments. According to researchers from the University of Iowa, dental hygienists may have some of the highest occupational incidence of carpal tunnel syndrome. In a survey of 95 hygienists, 93 reported at least one musculoskeletal disorder, particularly in the region of the wrist and hand, the neck and the upper back. At least one survey has found that dental hygienists have the highest rates of carpal tunnel syndrome of all occupations. Not really surprising, right? Roughly 44% reported symptoms associated with carpal tunnel syndrome and 8% had clinical carpal tunnel syndrome. So studies going back many years, like this one, have led to the changes in instruments as we know today. So to best care for your patients, it is vital you must care for yourself and your own health. So not only can we prevent this by practicing good ergonomics, but Maintaining sharp instruments is vital to good hygiene care. What are the benefits of a sharp instrument? Well, there are many benefits to a sharp instrument. Not only do they allow you to work more effectively and improve your tactile sensitivity, but they improve your performance. They allow you much better control they significantly reduce your appointment time, and they reduce strain and fatigue on your patient and on you. The bad news is that sharpening instruments is the one thing that is often neglected in our everyday practice. Sharpening has long been a dreaded chore for most hygienists. Correct positioning for so many instrument designs can be difficult. Freehand will most often lead to sharpening incorrectly and choosing and learning the right method of sharpening can be frustrating. According to a survey published in September 2018 issue of RDH magazine, over 15% of hygienists claim they have a lack of confidence in sharpening properly and 72% say they have a lack of time. And that's not surprising either, is it? I mean, lots of us lack time, especially with our 
busy day and busy appointments back to back all day long, we lack time with sharpening. It has been speculated that hygienists also suffer a loss of sharpening skills over time after graduation. So why do we sharpen? Well, besides all the things we've already discussed, you should sharpen to produce functionally a functionally sharp edge and to maintain the contours required for the intended use of the instrument. Just like your sickle curette, universal curettes have two cutting edges that come off the terminal shank at 90 degrees. Universal curettes have a round toe. As you can see here in the slide, the dull curette doesn't have the edge it needs to grab the calculus and remove it like the sharp one does on your left. The dull curette will burnish the calculus, leaving deposit behind, creating more work and possible fatigue, fatigue for the clinician. When the lateral surface and the face of the blade meet, where the lateral surface and the face of the blade meet is called the cutting edge. As the instrument dulls, the edges become rounded. As you can see here, the more rounded you allow the cutting edge to get, the longer it will take you to sharpen the instrument. That's why many clinicians find sharpening takes too long and they say they don't have time to sharpen. Sharpening at the first sign of dullness takes very little time and effort and it increases the life of the instrument. So, how dull are your instruments? All instruments lose their edge and need resharpening. You can see here that the instrument on the right is dull and needs sharpening as soon as possible. The instrument on the left should not even be put in a patient's mouth at this point. It has completely lost its shape and form, and at this point, it cannot be restored. Hopefully, you don't have any instruments that look like this. So, a lot of instruments in your kit may not be able to come back to life. It's a good idea to have a sample instrument to see how worn your instruments are. You can see in this slide that there is a new instrument on the right and an old instrument of the same type on the left. So the one on the left has been sharpened so much. You can see in the picture on the right, that this sickle scaler has been sharpened so much that it has, it's half its size now, it's so thin, which is very um, dangerous actually to use this in a patient's mouth, it could break off, which could be very harmful. And the one on the, the left is, used to be a, um, have a rounded toe, it now has a point to it. So it actually has totally lost its form. So definitely needs to be replaced, both of these. All right, so three ways that we can determine sharpness. One, by using an acrylic test stick. Two, the visual glare test. And three, clinical performance. So let's look at each of these. For the acrylic test stick, the instrument is held in a modified pin grasp and it is placed against the acrylic with a face between 80 and 90 degrees to the long axis of the stick. The cutting edge is first pulled gently in toward the stick and then an attempt is made to pull the instrument up the stick. If the cutting edge bites into the acrylic, the instrument is sharp. If the instrument does not bite, but it slides along the acrylic, the instrument is dull. The second way, the visual glare test. Okay, if you don't have a test stick available, then you can do the visual glare test to determine if the cutting edge is dull. A sharp cutting edge does not reflect light, but a dull one does. If you see light reflecting from the cutting edge, the instrument is quite dull. 
Okay, and you can see here in this picture how that works. The last way is the by clinical performance. Okay, once you have had the pleasure of working with sharp instruments, you will develop a tactile sensitivity and you will be able to tell when an instrument has lost its cutting edge. The instrument will begin to glide over calculus. You will notice that you start to leave calculus and you will have to apply more pressure, more lateral pressure to remove deposits, okay? You may also start to feel some pain in your fingers, your wrists, your arms, okay? So you'll notice, and this, this is probably the easiest way to notice that your instruments are getting dull, is that your calculus isn't coming off. You're not removing your deposits as easily as you were, okay? So how often do you sharpen? That is the number one question that we get asked. How often do I sharpen, okay? These points here are the questions you need to ask yourself, okay? So, how many kits do you have? And do you use the same kit more than once a day? Okay, so are you using your kits um, in the morning and then sterilizing it during lunch and then using the same ones in the afternoon? Okay, um, how many different instruments are you using? And with that, how much time do you spend using the Cavitron or the Piezo? So are you just using your instruments to fine scale and mostly using the Cavitron? Or are you just, are you mostly hand scaling? Okay. Um, are you a light or heavy handed hygienist? That, yeah, ask yourself that. Um, and what percentage of the day are you spending with advanced perio patients or pedo patients, okay? If you're in a perio office, obviously you're going to be um, using your hand instruments more. You're gonna be scaling more. Um, if you are in a pedo office, probably not so much, right? So basically you definitely just wanna keep a close eye on your instruments. When they first start to show signs of being dull, this is gonna dictate how often you need to sharpen. Um, lastly, what kind of instruments do, do you purchase? Or does your office purchase, okay? We're gonna look at three different categories of instruments. So manufacturers are taking into account the research and are creating better tools to help us as clinicians with the problems that we are facing. This evening, we are gonna look back at three different products and compare them and the options that are available. The first one is the classic PDT scalers. PDT steel, steel is hard enough to prevent frequent sharpening, but still requires regular sharpening maintenance. The second one is the Sharpen Less EverEdge 2.0 scalers. These new EverEdge instruments are sharper, more durable, and require less frequent sharpening. And the third one is the Sharpen Free American Eagle XP technology that has a special coating to help keep the instrument sharper longer. Sharpening these instruments actually voids the warranty. All right, so let's look at the first one, PDT. PDT stands for Paradise Tech Dental Technologies. PDT claims that their dental scalers and curettes are built with the patient and the clinician's health in mind. At PDT, they are passionate about creating instruments that increase clinician comfort through smart ergonomics, improved efficiency with better blade and handle design, and enhance dur durability by using only the best materials and processes. PDT instruments are ideally weighted. They have solid resin handles with a knurling up to the instrument shank that provides less hand fatigue and pinch. Plus, the instrument tips and blades are harder and tougher thanks to an innovative heat treatment and cryogenic process, meaning they retain their edge longer and can be resharpened 
so they last two to seven times longer. They also use a 440A stainless steel to create harder and tougher instruments. With the Hugh Freedy Everedge 2.0, the Sharp and Less instruments, this is a new product and Hugh Freedy is very proud of this product. They believe it will change the way you perform at your best. Everedge 2.0 uses a new optimized heat control process in order to maintain the hard sharp edge. Similar to the original Everedge technology, the proprietary processing ensures that the superior edge retention and wear characteristics of the Everedge 2.0 will last the entire life of the instrument. Since it's not a superficial coating, the characteristics can't be sharpened or scraped away. Everedge 2.0 scalers can be resharpened at any point to extend their life. Here in this picture, you can see one of the um, resin handle Everedge 2.0 scalers. They also make a, um, a metal handle, all metal handle. The last one we have here is the um, American Eagle XP Sharpen 3 instrument. So revolutionizing the dental industry is something American Eagle has always strived for. And the XP technology is the next evolution in instrument design and usage. With XP technology, American Eagle has completely eliminated the need to resharpen instruments. Whether the instrument being shared is being shared by multiple hygienists or by a single hygienist, who just wants to increase his or her productivity and profitability, XP technology offers a perfect solution to the most common problem associated with the use of hand instruments. Sharpening, resharpening, right? Due to the thin blade design of the XP instrument, American Eagle does not recommend sharpening. When the instrument becomes dull, you simply replace it with a new one. <coughs> Excuse me. Clinicians also will use a very light grasp and a shaving stroke rather than lateral pressure below a deposit, similar to the technique that you use with an ultrasonic scaler. This scaling stroke improves ergonomics, hand health, and patient comfort. You'll notice here it's an all resin um, handle. It lasts six to 12 months. And again, you cannot sharpen these instruments. Sharpening will void the warranty. Here's a question. Let's see. Is there any difference in the tactile feedback between the classic sharpen less and sharpen free instruments? Is there a difference in tactile feedback? Um, in my opinion, I in my opinion with these three instruments, and this is just my opinion, um, there is a, a slight difference in the tactile sensitivity for me. But that is basically because of the handle. So I feel like the lighter handles and the resin handles have a better tactile sensitivity. <coughs> Excuse me. Any other questions? I will say that I, I really, all three of these instruments are really great. And again, I think it depends on where you, you know, what type of patients you're seeing and where you're working and how often you're using your hand instruments as to which ones you prefer. Um, also, it depends on how often you need to sharpen and how comfortable you are with sharpening. Um, I think the sharpen free instruments are wonderful. I love the stroke with those, um, but not everybody likes, not everybody likes to sharpen free instruments and some people feel comfortable with their sharpening skills. So that may not be for everyone. Um, I feel like the, the, um, the classic PDT are great. I love the weight of those. They're very light. They, I think they weigh 13, um, a little over 13 grams, which I, I love that. Um, 
but then of course I I like I also like the um, the sharp and less Hugh Freedy instruments. I mean, I think those are kind of a traditional instrument that have been around forever. And so I kind of like, I was trained using those instruments. So I still love those too. So I, and I actually have a variety of instruments. I don't use just one type of instruments. I actually have some of each of these. So again, it just depends on what you like. I would suggest you definitely try a variety and see which, you know, see which ones are suited for you. All right, thank you, Kim. Yes. Thank you, Kim. Uh, this is Andrea again. Thank you, Kim, and thank you, everyone, for joining us this evening. Uh, everyone who registered will receive a follow-up email with a link to the, the recording of the webinar and also a link to, uh, to follow to this, this website to purchase um, with a 20% off discount. Awesome. And thank you, everyone, thank you. And, and have a good evening. Thank you. Bye-bye, okay. everyone.